I'm going to the Doncaster archives to maybe learn a bit more about the Blesseds. How far the miners go back, or were they miners? Hi, Charles. N nice to see you. Welcome. Now, then, have you found anything about the Blessers? Oh, I think I have. You have? Filter into the social. Oh, great, great, great. Archivist Charles Callum has been looking into the Blessed family tree. So, here we are, Brian. There's the Blessed family line. Here we have your grandfather, George William, your great-grandfather, George Jabez Blessed. And his father was Jabez Blessed, who was born about 1817. My goodness me. What extra... Jabez Blessed? And his parents, we know, were Barnabas Blessed and Elizabeth Atkinson. Barnabas Blessed was married to Elizabeth Atkinson. Do you know anything about Barnabas Blessed? I mean, was he a coal miner? Ah, now, we happen to know that he was a bookbinder and stationer. Never. By trade, yes. He was a bookbinder and stationer. Yes. I used to do that at school, bookbinding, and... I mean, I mean, do, do, I mean, do we know anything more about them at all there, Charles? Well, we know, we know that from their marriage bands that they were married in 1801 at uh, St Pancras Chapel in London. In London? Yes. Extraordinary St Pancras in that way. And a bookbinder and his wife, a gentle trade, publishing. Oh, well, I mean, they're definitely not kind of miners. The coal mining seems to have stopped and now we're into bookbinding. Yes. But London, the South. Mm. Here we come. Brian now knows that his great-great-great-grandparents, Barnabas and Elizabeth Blessed, were married in 1801, not in Yorkshire, but in London. This is taken by surprise, this one. I didn't expect to be going back to London. Which is absolutely a complete shock. I'm here at the back of King's Cross, St Pancras. All this noise, it's ridiculous. And I didn't know this church existed. It's St Pancras Church. And I believe this is where Barnabas and Elizabeth got married. I would never have expected it. Where are my Yorkshire roots? <laughs> it's, it's bizarre. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? A wonderful atmosphere. And I, I didn't know about it. <sighs> also startling, as you know, that. It was over 200 years ago, 1801. 200 years ago they were here. And they got married, and they had children, and out of the long line, I appeared. I owe them that. So thank you, Barnabas, and thank you, Elizabeth. I wonder if they're looking in on me now. I wonder what they look like. I wonder what she wore. You know. I bet she looked gorgeous. Barnabas. Barnabas Blessed. It sounds like something from Dickens, doesn't it? Barnabas Blessed. You take Elizabeth for your wife? Yes. Do you take Barnabas for your husband? Yes. Yes. You may kiss the bride. Professor James Raven has more information for Brian about Barnabas Blessed. Hello, Brian. <laughs> Hello, James. I believe you're going to enlighten me. Well, I hope you so. <laughs> <laughs> so Barnabas was a bookbinder and a stationer. I mean, what does that involve? Well, this was an extremely exciting time for the book trade. There was increased literacy. There was a growing demand for books. And the books were all hand handmade. And in many ways, the binder, of which your great, great, great grandfather was one, was one of the unsung heroes of this extraordinary revolution in book production at the end of the 18th century and the early 19th century. An unsung hero? Uh, absolutely.
At the time, books were manufactured unbound, and it was the job of bookbinders like Barnabas Blessed to sew in the pages, construct the cover, and engrave the lettering. In the rapidly expanding market, there was a huge range of bookbinders, from modest itinerants who carried their tools on their backs to the highly skilled who worked for elite customers. So Barnabas, have we any idea what his position was in this world well, that he lived in? That's a very good question. He didn't have a shop or something like that? Well, we think he did. And we're very fortunate because there is a certain type of record that we're able to use to pinpoint him no. quite precisely. No! And we have here the land tax records of the early 19th century. And they can show us quite precisely where Barnabas, or as he says here, Barnaby, as in Barnaby, blessed. What does it say, my son? And what here he is in Bull in Court. Bull in Court? Which is just off the strand. And we can tell from the assessment yes, yes. that the tax collector has made as rent of £32, which puts him in a sort of middling range. How fascinating. The size of the shop's really very important, but it's also more the location. That's what's most exciting. Really? Because he's in the middle of a flourishing, extremely fashionable part of London, close to booksellers and close to potentially elite customers as well. Oh, bravo, Barnaby, eh? Yes, absolutely. Marvellous history <laughs> personified by a great guy. Oh, I'm, I'm very proud of him. Good.